Welcome to the Kalispell Warhawk Dynasty, everybody, where today we have a bit of a bonus episode. Many of you wanted to see Texas A&M take on Stanford and watch Justin Colbert play one more time. Justin Colbert is a pretty big part of this series after helping us win a national championship. We watched us play against him this season, and he had a very good game, but Texas A&M came up short. He's enjoyed a very successful season for the 5-4 and four Aggies, and today we're going to watch him take on Stanford. This game doesn't actually carry as much weight as I thought it did, because I forgot that it's the conference record that matters when it comes to conference standings. So this game is not really going to impact much. It will affect their, their polling. There is a little something for us to gain here as we do want to get back above Stanford in the standings, or the rankings rather, but they still own the tiebreaker over us and so we need another conference loss to fall below us in the standings. So this game isn't as big as I thought, but many of you wanted to see it. I said I'd make this episode and I wanted to watch Justin Colbert go play one more time. So let's go watch and cheer on Colbert and the Texas A&M Aggies. Justin Colbert has led this to be one of the best passing offenses in all of college football and they're a top 10 scoring offense. It's just their defense is really bad. They allow a ton of points and a ton of yards. So Texas A&M is only 5-4 and four as we get into this one. There's number 5. This time we can actually cheer for him to go and get the victory. I do have to handle the kickoff for Texas A&M just because I had to choose their playbook so they weren't running Air Forces out here. But it's Stanford and Texas A&M. Here we go. This is a matchup between two teams we have seen this season. We beat Texas A&M back in week one, 42-36. Justin Colbert had some really great moments in that game, but we saw their defense eventually be the reason they lost the game. And against Stanford, it was that man right there, Patrick Miller, who was a huge issue for us. Right now, Miller has 953 yards and 8 touchdowns, but he's fallen out of the Heisman consideration. Apparently, the numbers haven't been great enough lately, and some good run defense here by the Aggies forces a third and long. If you're wondering about the next true Kalispell episode with our Warhawks, it's going to be tomorrow against Oregon State. Third and 11, Brewster steps up, going deep, and he got him! That's going to be a big pickup for the Cardinal, Mike Wright, for 50 yards. Back to this defense being like 92nd in the country. Now you're seeing why. It's kind of fun to be a neutral commentator in a way, just because I don't have uh, much to really worry about in the game. Here's an inside give to Patrick Miller, not much there. But a lot of you enjoyed when I did this for the, uh, the national championship with Jesse Heikinen. And I think going forward, any national championship we're not a part of, I'll likely do the same. And we can get to see some of the other teams that are excellent in this dynasty. And on the outside now, it's Miller losing four to force another third and long. And the Aggies get off the field this time. They do spread out this defense. Against the Blitz, Brewster intercepted! He tried to go right down the middle again, and the Aggies will take over. Justin Colbert, it's time to take the field. Colbert this season has 18 touchdowns, four interceptions, and just over 2,000 yards passing. Throwing on first down, there he goes across the middle, and it's Cliff McKeon who had an excellent game against us. I still remember that big deep ball he had in the second half, I think. Diving down that sideline, somehow stayed in bounds. Very unforgettable play. First down, Colbert on target again for Victor Wright. McKeon very close to 1,000 yards, by the way. I bet he gets there today. Colbert on second down against the Blitz. Got it out there, complete again. First down, Aggies. It's first down again. Colbert across the middle now, and another one complete. Good start, and Victor Wright has caught the last three balls. It's just like doing an episode here in the Browns' rebuild. This is kind of like me demoing what it would be like if I did 
a dynasty similar to my new style of rebuild on my second channel. That one's dropped. Colbert on second down. He's going to air this one out and got his man again. Now it's Lance Mitchell for 14. Unfortunately, in the settings, I did not see anything about keeping player names on if they have the ball or anything. Here's another one across the middle, now incomplete. And third and ten. Colbert's ninth pass of his possession is a third down dump off, and he's not going to get the first down. Running back Jeremiah Perry a bit short. Wow, Oregon's on a roll. They beat Stanford, and now they top Cal. Are you kidding me? The number two team goes down. I'm glad we already played the Ducks this season. I'm doing this before the next Kalispell episode, by the way, just because this is before Kalispell on the schedule, and I assume that if we played through Kalispell, we'd likely get studio updates of this game or see the score down low, and I just wanted it to match up. I wanted to make these the next two videos, so I'm just doing it the, in the way that makes the most sense. So 3-0 Texas A&M after a solid field goal possession. And now it's time for the Cardinal to take the field. And they're going to run it. Patrick Miller gets nothing. Hey, this is my formation. Full house pistol. Brewster to scramble. He's taken down. Third and seven. Anyone know if those helmet stickers get updated dynamically based on performance or whatever? I always thought that would be so cool to have that, but it wasn't an option in Team Builder. There's a conversion to Casey Avery. Hand off again to Patrick Miller, and still this run defense holding up quite well, but this time four yards. I wonder how many of these games I've actually commentated. It's got to be a pretty incredible number. Here's Brewster on the outside, finding his man again, Mike Wright, and this gets eight. Aggie's playing very soft on this play, and the give goes to Miller out to the right-hand side. He goes aerial and gets seven yards for another first down. I really enjoyed Patrick Miller, though, in that game against us, even as a running back enthusiast, you could say. Here's Brewster running for 15, by the way. But I was really impressed by the way he played against us. I thought that Miller would stay in the Heisman race, and we could kind of keep up on that all season. So... I don't know, I wouldn't be mad if he got back in there. He was a solid back. If we got destroyed by a Heisman winner, that would make us look a little bit better. And here goes Miller all the way out inside the five. It's a 25-yarder. Things are opening up for the Stanford ground game. Aiden Spithill checks in as they're going to flex out the tight end. And Brewster's taken down immediately. They'll run it now, Spit Hill. no, it's third down. The running back auto subs were so good in this game, weren't they? Third and goal now, Brewster setting up the screen and he's gonna bail out of this play. Stanford now looking to tie things up. This game is tied. Here in the first quarter, Justin Colbert back to work on drive, number two when he gets intercepted. Trying to fire to the outside, and Stanford gets it right back. Hopefully it's the only one Colbert throws today, but each quarterback now has one. Cardinal now have it first and ten. Brewster airing it out and got him at the sideline. That's Avery. Their formation choices have been so strange. On second down, they run it with Miller, who gets very close to moving the chains. Just about the end of this quarter, third and one. Back to Miller, and he's going to be very close. And it depends how they rule it, and he's short. Big time defense to start the day by Texas A&M. If they can get out of this first quarter allowing six points, that's a success, I feel. Can Justin Colbert rebound from the interception? Four receivers in the game for the Aggies. Against the rush, across the middle, and good for seven yards. I know there are still many Justin Colbert fans in the comments, those of you that even preferred him over Brandon Warren. I know there were some of you. Now the pressure forces a really bad throw. That was weird. Colbert began the game like five of seven, and now these last couple possessions have just been atrocious. 
And back to the Cardinal now. And outside runs Patrick Miller showing off some of that power. Now he gets seven. That's already 11 carries, though. They're going right back to Patty Miller up the middle. And this time he's got himself a first down. What if the first player to ever transfer to Kalispell ended up being a running back? How awesome would that be? I can't believe it still hasn't happened. Now they're going to Spit Hill with the battering ram down the middle. Gain of eight. I know oftentimes the backs that get a lot of work, they'll actually kind of disappear in the second half for extended periods of time. So I bet we could see a lot of Spit Hill later as he breaks a tackle and has the first down. I think Miller's a junior, I want to say. I might be wrong, but Spit Hill behind him. When Miller's gone, it's not going to be much of a reason to celebrate because I think Spit Hill's going to be very good after him. Here's Miller once again carrying, and he's going to get four more. Now against us, they ran a lot with Brewster. He's not really doing that today yet. Brewster to throw on second down, trying to scramble out, and he's sacked. Loss of seven by George Lyles. Cardinal needs 13 yards. Brewster to the middle. Good job by the Aggie defense. I've been really impressed by their play so far. Three more on the board for Stanford. More field goals. No touchdowns yet. Justin Colbert taking over after two forgettable possessions. He's running the draw. What is this? This is Brandon Warren's thing. Well, I guess part of the game of football is the element of surprise, and I didn't expect that. Four-yard run by Colbert. Now he's throwing on second down. Deep down field. Oh, my. Nearly picked. What's happening to Justin Colbert? The Aggies are 0 of 2 on third down, and that needs to change if they're to keep this a game. Third and six. They're not. Oh, they are going to get it. That was wrong. Jeremiah Perry, nice play. Keeping things in the air. Colbert again checked down. Keep giving it to Jeremiah Perry. Oh, wow. They bust out read option, and Justin Colbert has the first down. Eight-yard pickup. I wasn't expecting the Colbert running on this possession, but here we are. Now it's third down and eight. They go four receivers across the field. Oh, they're going to make a change here at the line. From the pistol, here's Colbert. Got to get this away. Deep ball, double covered and incomplete. Nothing again for Texas A&M. Nothing since their opening possession. And they're going to have to keep stopping Patrick Miller and not letting the running game wear them out. Brewster on second down. That's going to be complete. Spinning across the 35-yard line is Casey Avery. Stanford's just been much more efficient. Brewster is 9 of 7, or 7 of 9 passing, and it seems every time they run, they're getting 4 or more. It's third down and two. They go with the heavy personnel. Nice stop in the backfield. A loss of five for Pat Miller. George Lyles comes up big again. All right, good job forcing the field goal, but now what do they do with these final three minutes? Justin Colbert comes out with four receivers. He wants to make it five, it looks like. Colbert, good pocket presence, and the ball's on point! Finding Cliff McKeon for 29 yards. That's what makes Colbert special. The timing, the accuracy, the poise. Now we gotta see it happen more often. Halftime is approaching. Extra man sent on the rush, and this one is hauled in on the outside by Mitchell. Four on the rush again, time for Justin Colbert. Once it all, got his man, touchdown! Justin Colbert to Michael Dorsey! And the Aggies have a chance to take the lead. Nice throw, Justin. What a good game so far. This is not how I expected things to play out. I thought it'd be way higher scoring if Texas A&M kept it close and they almost got it here on a fumble. They ended up overturning the fumble, I want to say, and it's still going to be a tough spot now for Stanford as we see Texas A&M take a timeout. 
Third down and seven now for the Cardinal. Brewster, not gonna get it. Another big stop here for the Aggies. Coach McBride has to be happy with the way things are going so far. And they have a chance to score again and get the ball after halftime as well. Here's Colbert from the condensed pocket, nearly picked again. Colbert's got to be careful. Stanford can make plays on defense. He's going deep again. It's a laser. McKeon goes the distance. 55 yards. This offense is at their best when they can go vertical. Nice throw again, Justin Colbert. Oh, whoa. Injury for Patrick Miller. He's going to miss the rest of the regular season. And there goes the chances of him possibly winning the Heisman Trophy. I'm actually disappointed about that. I wanted to see him have a good year. But now it's going to be up to Aiden Spithill to pick up the slack. I know Blackjack's going to be enjoying that story for the rest of the game. But now Texas A&M, they've gotten themselves into great position. How long can the defense keep this up? There they go on the blitz. Third and long upcoming. Oh, Aggies, you should have used your timeout. Make them punt again. You never know where you're going to end up. Or you can use it now. I guess it doesn't really matter. There you go. That's okay, McBride. You know how to coach. Up, up, and away. And they're going to have a chance to return this one. And Colbert, what can you do with 10 seconds? Throw it 25 yards, 30 yards, see what happens. Maybe get in field goal range. That deep ball's on point, though. And they can separate down the field. McKeon's got great speed. I'm not so sure about Dorsey, but we saw him get behind him. Here's first down. Colbert's going down, and that's going to end the half. But a great half of football. I love this stuff. I love adding this detail to the Kalispell Dynasty. Thank you for suggesting this in the last comment section. Glad I caught that before recording more. Stanford is losing their second consecutive game. But will they be able to rebound in the second half? It's been a shocking game so far. We saw Stanford hit that 50-yard pass on their first third down. And that was really the highlight of their offense. Miller got going a little while, but he got hurt. And he's not going to play today or the next few games. So now Stanford, without their top running back, down by eight points, on the road against Justin Colbert. What's next? The Aggies are in control, 17-9, as Colbert retakes the field, coming off two consecutive touchdown drives. I will not count that last partial possession. Here's an underneath pass for six yards. Oh, it's a quick screen, and it was terrible. That's an impressive number in a way. One of four on third down isn't good, but the fact that they've only seen four third downs while Stanford has seen nine. We're seeing the Aggies now stay ahead of the chains and not have to convert everything on third down. I can spin that to be good. Cliff McKeon, by the way, over a thousand yards on the season. He now has nine touchdowns. Great stuff out of him. First down now for the Aggies from this pistol, and it's going to be J.C. on the keeper. Oh, no! Third down and 10 here for the Aggies. Blitz is sent. Colbert stands tall, and this pass is complete to Lance Mitchell. It is such an interesting dynamic seeing a player that we got to know quite well now go to a different team, and we have to watch him play in a very different kind of setting. It's really fun, though, and it's just another layer of what's uh, making this Kalispell experience so fun. Wide open over the middle. It's another Aggie first down. This pass game is rolling. They showed they could beat Stanford deep, and now they're doing it short and intermediate. This is a clinic being put on by Justin Colbert. Got to give these receivers credit, too. They're playing great. Colbert is already 9 yards from 300 on the day. He's thrown the ball 30 times, and we're barely over halfway done. Second and seven. Oh, it's a draw. Third down now. Needing nine, they'll break out the screen. It's a completion, and George Phillips gets them four. So big stand there by Stanford. 
Here's Spithill carrying for Stanford, and they'll need him big in this second half. Now it's Brewster to the air. There's a strike, and he's intercepted. This could go back for six. Inside the 20 to the 10, and out at the 5. Texas A&M already up 11. Get the pick by Julian Jackson. Look at that coverage. Can they get the touchdown to really go up big? Empty set, second down. Colbert, sideline. Three yards. If this play goes for a touchdown, Colbert will have 300 yards passing. He's at 298. Third down and goal. Stanford once again needs their red zone defense to come up big. It's a draw! No! I love the call there, and it didn't work. It's like I called that. That's something I'd do. Not bad numbers here for the Aggie defense. Three sacks, two turnovers. The Aggies now are up by 14 points. So Stanford, you're not totally out of this game, but you've really been in this cold stretch now for a while. They got to get something. And they'll try it with Spit Hill all the way out. Got the outside here for a first down at 16 yards. Brewster goes empty on first down and almost got sacked. I like the blitzing here out of Texas A&M. Back to Spithill now, and this is going to be the key. Don't let Spithill make these third downs easier. A full house backfield. They toss it to Spithill. He'll break a tackle but still end up short. If I were Stanford in this situation, I would be so frustrated because they are moving the ball. It's just on third down. They've been awful. Texas A&M's made so many third down plays. Football is a strange sport because you can outplay your opponent or do better in certain spots, but it's all erased if you're not good in some of the key areas. Football is, like I've said before, this game is the sequel to chess. Football is the greatest game ever made. Third down and nine. Here's Colbert, four man rush. He's gonna fire this one downfield. Got him in stride and out of bounds. This is caught by Scott Lopez, 37 yards. Are we gonna see Colbert hit the four hundo today? You can't take your foot off the gas, that's for sure. Love this, Colbert across the middle, another one, Lopez. The air on first down, another deep ball. It's a touchdown for Cliff McKeon. Three deep balls out of Colbert and three touchdowns. Unbelievable performance today. We have one team that's hit the big play on countless occasions and another team that only has a couple and they were in the first quarter. Stanford in a deep hole now, down 21 points. The run game can still be a part of this comeback, but they need points now. And the Cardinal defense. This is the same defense that was constantly in our backfield when we played them, and it was one of our worst passing performances in a long time. We had 13 points, and that touchdown came very late in the game. I want to say it was Marcus Payne on a long run. Now, here today, totally different situation. Stanford is reeling after the loss to Oregon, and today they look awful. A win today would make Texas A&M Bowl eligible, by the way. And I might even be willing to watch the Colbert Bowl game, if that's a thing, in a cool matchup, perhaps. But if this is the last time we see Justin Colbert, what a send-off. We've hardly seen the Aggies run today. Jeremiah Perry has been used mostly as a receiver, and I'm not sure that's going to be changing anytime soon. Aggies get nine here to Dorsey. Now they go to Jeremiah Perry, and he's going to get through for about eight yards and a first down. On first down, another one to an open receiver. This Stanford defense, I cannot believe, is the same defense we played back in week four. Colbert is now six yards away from 400. That is incredible. And he's going to throw it on first down. Colbert wants way more than four and gets intercepted. 
forcing one in the double coverage. But the Cardinal have not shown any ability to capitalize. They have no touchdowns. They've been ice cold in this second half. And here's Brewster with a quick one. He'll find his receiver over the middle. And we're still getting close to the fourth quarter. Handoff to Aiden Spithill and another good pickup. The running stats are going to look very good after this game, but it's not going to mean much. They're going to keep things on the ground now. Spithill gets a rest and they call on TJ Hubbard. So they're kind of giving up on letting the pass game carry everything. It's going to be all about running. Third down for Stanford. They keep it on the ground and Spithill is dropped for a big loss. Now they really need to go for it. They do have four receivers in the game. Brewster climbing. Deep ball unloaded and nearly picked off. It's okay. You take over on downs anyway. Up 21. So who expected us to have a game today where Justin Colbert just destroys the Stanford defense? This is unlike anything I could have expected from this game. I thought if anybody got blown out, it would be Texas A&M. I thought that this would be a game about Stanford dominating the Aggie defense and it being about Justin Colbert trying to fight to keep this team in the game and to pull off some sort of comeback in the second half. And instead, it's been the Justin Colbert show. It had a slow start, but wow, the middle of this game was nothing but Aggie big plays. And now Jeremiah Perry picks them up a first down, and he's hurt on the play. Inside handoff, a stiff arm is delivered. George Phillips for seven. What's incredible here is that Colbert has a few touchdown passes. None have come in the red zone. They're actually, in their three possessions down here, they have three field goals. It was the deep ball that got them all the scores. So can they change that? Can Colbert get touchdown pass number four? I like the trip stack there to the top, the open side of the defense. Colbert to throw it in the middle. That's complete. First down. Second down and goal. It's a keeper. Justin Colbert in for the rushing touchdown. There you go. 36 to 9. Complete domination by the Texas A&M Aggies. It was fun to cheer them on today and watch them deliver this kind of a game. For Stanford, this is certain to make them plummet in the rankings. However, it is not a conference loss. So unless this just helps continue a streak that they keep going next time, they're still going to be higher than us in the standings. So that conference loss is still what we're waiting for. So they no longer own that tiebreaker. And we've got to win our games. We still have Oregon State. We still have Cal. Two teams that have suffered bad losses lately. So we'll see what kind of a challenge they bring us. And again, Cal Kalispell and Oregon State is coming to the channel tomorrow. Oh my, another one. Here goes Perry down the middle. Jeremiah Perry inside the 15. Fantastic. Oh no, it's another keeper. Justin Colbert to the one. He almost got there again. This is one of the most amazing games I've ever seen. Texas A&M continues to pile it on. It's 43 to nine. Oh, one more for good measure. What a performance. The Aggie offense and their defense both have come to play against the number eight Stanford Cardinal. Where is Stanford going to be after all this? It looks like one more snap here for the Texas A&M offense as they can seal an amazing win. This was awesome. Where's the score, by the way? I've never seen the team names and score disappear before. But Texas A&M just won the game. Super proud of Justin Colbert. It was awesome to watch him play. If this was the last time, what a way to send him on his way.
We all know who player of the game is going to be after this one. What a day, Justin Colbert. 428 passing yards, 22 on the ground, four total touchdowns. A game that I certainly didn't see coming. I couldn't believe how open they got on those deep balls, though. That was sure something. Now, we go from Justin Colbert with Texas A&M to his former high school backup, Roshan Phillips, in our next episode against Oregon State. They both came out of Poulsen, Montana in the same year. And now Roshan gets his chance. Justin gets his chance. It's a pretty cool story. Steve Brewster, three interceptions, no touchdowns, while Justin Colbert, of course, accounted for four touchdowns. Stanford couldn't do anything but kick field goals today, and everything seemed to go downhill when Miller left the game. I know Spithill's average is worse, but right after Miller left, it just seemed like nothing went right for this team. They did run the ball quite well, almost 200 yards on the ground, but they still get no touchdowns. I can't believe this team destroyed us. What a fun episode, everybody. I really enjoyed spending some time today, even if this game doesn't carry as much weight as I originally did. There was a comment on actually my channel update that reminded me that, hey, this is not a conference game, so you still need to, you know, have that conference loss. And yeah, hopefully it happens, but Stanford now has gotten beat twice in a row, and we'll see if any of the remaining Pac-12 foes can help us out even further. For Kalispell, we'll see them next, with Roshan Phillips leading the Warhawks once again with the injury to Brandon Warren, sidelining him for another game. We take on the Oregon State Beavers, and it should be a good one. It's coming to the channel tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everybody. Really hope you enjoyed today's bonus episode of the Kalispell Warhawk Dynasty. Please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel, and I'll be seeing you with more Warhawk football soon. Have a great day.